Hello, and welcome to the Relationship Marketing Podcast. I hope everyone's having a great day. I'm here with another awesome founder, and Shido, founder of Squared Pegs. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me here. Thanks for hopping on. Selfishly, I'm excited for this interview because you're going to be giving me some good AI content tips. Um, so give us a quick um, introduction um, on what you guys and how you're helping people right now. That's why I call it relationship marketing. How are we helping people? And then we're going to give them some cool lessons. Right. So we help early stage startups accelerate using creatives and marketing and data and really tying it all together to help them reach a broader customer or reach their niche customer just in a more efficient way. So it's startups who have that proof of concept or who've seen their sales rise and are really at that cusp where the grass graph grows up. But mm -hmm. um, they're not exactly sure how to do that yet or they don't have the resources to do that yet. And that's where we jump in. And interesting enough, AI and the different content, right? And when I asked you before our interview, I'm like, oh, how much AI do you use? And you're like, none, this is personal. So um, th there's no robots and you're gonna, you'll probably give me another good quote like you uh, did last time, but we don't wanna work with robots. Humans don't want robots. They want the real person making sure that it makes sense to the other real people, your your clients. So yeah, absolutely. give us, give, Go ahead, give us your background on Squared Pegs and why you started this. Right, so I actually started the agency just last year. So um, we're very new, we're like babies in the business world. But um, the reason I started was because uh, all my experience has been in marketing and with working with startups. And what I realized was that I really like the tangibility of success when you work with startups because the smallest thing can happen and everybody just goes crazy. They're like, yes, we, we reached you know, our first five figures in sales. And it's just, it's, it's that feeling. It's so amazing to help early stage startups. And um, secondly, also because I wanted to use um, my powers for good. <laughs> mm, nice. So, uh, I feel like, you know, companies that are huge, huge companies um, listed on the stock exchanges or have great uh, funding behind them, they already have the resources and connections to hire an entire team or just get any sort of help that they would want to even within marketing. But it's early stage startups founded by people who are um, in the tech space, people who are really, really good at what they do, but you know, marketing doesn't necessarily have to be a part of it. And I want to step in, help them really achieve their goals and create positivity in the world. I love it. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that. And that's one thing is I'm always looking to interview people that their goal is to like help others and get excited for your clients. And, you know, if they hire you, they know that you've got their back, like you're looking out for them. One cool thing I wanted to read from your website is your brand isn't just your logo and your marketing isn't just ads. Talk to me about that. Like, what does that mean to you? Because I love how you take a personal approach to this. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, what we refer to in the marketing world as dinosaurs, uh, they really seem to think that marketing and branding is this like one stop shop where you just you create a logo, you create the website, and then you run ads. And that's pretty much it. But it's not it's really what the essence of your podcast is, is about. It's about relationships. So, you know, um, one exercise that I go through with all my brands is I tell them to close their eyes and imagine five years or 10 years into the future, they meet their brand as a person. So what does this person look like now? How are they dressed? What is their personality? What is the first thing they say to you? Where do they live? How do they behave? It's stuff like that. Because if you close your eyes right now, you can imagine what McDonald's would be like as a human. You can imagine what Pepsi would be like as a human. So why not your brand? That's what your brand is. And when you get to that point where you're like, okay, I need to connect with my customers so they remember me, you need to be human with them. You need to have this personality that is so tangible that somebody can just reach through the screen and touch it. Wow, I love that. And that, and when we get into like your services and how the, those services help people, I think that will show even more on, okay, who am I? I build my logo. I got my website, but now what? And that's usually where everyone's like, now what? I tried doing marketing, but it doesn't work. Dive into maybe why that it doesn't work or what they should do, especially with those AI experiments to find something that resonates with their audience, right? Right. First of all, um, your audience is our humans. They're not robots. Unless you're marketing to robots, it doesn't really make sense to create everything through AI. Secondly, um, 
you know, creating a website, having a logo, all of that stuff is really, really important. But everybody is doing that. Like literally everybody who has a business is doing all of that. So how do you set yourself apart through it? Like nobody cares anymore. You know, you you as an audience, think about the last time that you went and followed a brand social media page. Why did you do it? I'm sure you didn't do it because you saw some aesthetic pictures of the products you liked or because yeah. you really like the logo. So you keep visiting it every mm -hmm. day. When's the last time that happened? It, it doesn't. So yeah. when you're using AI content, it's just really, really important to... Um, you know, you can create summaries with AI, you can have ideas spat out by AI, but by the end of the day, having that human touch and really differentiating yourself in, you know, the graphic content or the written content, whatever it is that you're creating through AI is extremely important because if, you, if even the robots can't differentiate you from 10 other people who are giving the same prompts, how exactly do you expect your audience to do that? 100%. And you mentioned something to me, I wrote down this quote, robots are not your target audience let's be real <laughs> exactly that's the entire point i'm continuously surprised that okay i'll tell you this little experiment that i did um there is this fashion brand that's a client and for them we were trying to write these product descriptions that would be a little bit different and really capture their audience which was entirely gen z so um we were doing a competitive analysis going through a lot of different websites seeing how people are write, uh, are writing it so that we can come up with something different right it's amazing to me that most of the brands, and I'm talking about big brands, which I don't want to name, <laughs> right. but big brands, when you open their websites and you go through, let's say, uh, please jump up, okay? You will see pretty much the same words repeated in each and every description. And the mm. reason that is, is not because they're talking about the fabric. No, if you're saying elevate your style in every description, it's AI. There are particular words that everybody is using right now. So... How does that help? How How is it helping your target audience when, you know, you and 10 of your competitors are all elevating your style by the end of the day? <laughs> I love how you dove into that because it's also, you know, copywriting techniques is super important, making that your copywriting resonate with your audience. So AI can't do powerful copywriting that's different and really addresses those pain points, right? Yeah, exactly. I think one of my favorite newsletters is Everyone Hates Marketers. Um, <laughs> it's this amazing guy. If you follow him, I don't know. But uh, that guy, you can tell that he writes it all himself because he has this unique tone of voice that's just a little bit caustically sarcastic, which I absolutely love. And that's not the sort of thing that you can get out of AI. Like, you know sure. that a human is making it, you know. And that's why I follow it. I love it. I, I need to follow that. I haven't, I haven't heard of that, but that sounds good. Yes, so good. All right, everybody watching is hopefully starting a brand or has a brand, but we're already busy. Like we're busy managing our team, managing our clients. We know we need to be doing social media, um, whether it's organic or ads. So we think AI is going to save us time. What makes, what are you guys doing that's different that allows us to make different creatives test different creatives, use those for advertising or marketing that actually works. And this actually is a question for myself as well, because I'm like, man, I post content, but I'd love to split test this or try different angles on this. So get, tell us what's working and what you guys do that's different, because it's pretty cool. Right. So there is two different stages to it. The first stage, if you haven't run anything or you don't really have a lot of data to look at, is going through your competitor analysis and really diving deep into what your target audience is like and then marrying those two ideas. So yeah. you see that this is, you know, like, for example, if I have to start a marketing newsletter, I'm going to look at everyone hates marketers. I'm going to look at five other newsletters like that. And then I'm going to look at who exactly I want to reach. And then I'm going to start writing my content and ideas that are on the same line so that I'm reaching the exact, you know, I'm reaching the sentiments of the target audience, but I'm not exactly copying somebody's content okay. and I'm not exactly, um, you know, just ripping somebody off basically or sounding the same. Like my unique tone of voice has to be in there. Then you split test them, A-B test them, just put it out on different things. Like for example, if it's a newsletter, you can have different subject lines, you can have different preview texts or um, the first paragraph could be absolutely different. Send it out to people, see what happens. See how many people open something because of your subject line. See how many people read through the end and click on a CTA. You know, you can split test CTAs. So that's the sort of stuff that 
literally tells you that this is something that works and this is something that absolutely doesn't and maybe I need to change my focus. The second part of it is getting a lot of, you know, creatives out there on the thing that is working now that you have enough data you know that okay this is what I want this is what my target audience wants and this is what I do really well so now I'm going to create graphics and videos and animations and written content on the basis of that and rapidly test it out so um, if we're talking about newsletters let me go to Facebook ads because everybody seems to run Facebook ads yep. um, if you or have try. Already... <laughs> or try if you have a video which is um which has an influencer, uh, you know, showing up, showing off your product in different ways. So now you can have that influencer capture the first line, the hook, as we call it, um, you know, two to three different hooks, get them out in the market, see how everybody's responding, what makes people watch the video more, what makes people click on the video more to actually go through to your website. If you're doing it in terms of an email campaign, then, you know, test out the subject lines. That is something we continuously do as well when we're okay. trying to create a pipeline for new clients or for existing clients is we take these subject lines and see which one works better. And honestly, most of the times, um, you think you know best, but your data will tell you entirely different. And in all of this, you see how I didn't mention AI? Because you don't need it. You absolutely do not need it. Like, trust me, copywriters, copywriting has been a job for years, and it's going to be a job for a lot more years. It, yeah. It's not going anywhere. AI cannot do what we can do. I test some things out. Some things work. Some things don't work. So the things that work, that just means that it's resonating with my audience. And I probably need to just making more content that's like that, right? Exactly. I mean, you really need to look into the right metrics. Like, for example, if um, your own aim is to have more people watch your podcast, then you might want to see what sort of opening hook or the you know what sort of thing that has the first five second test is making people watch more of it or making uh, you know have have those through plays increase by the end of the day, have that average watch time increase. On the other hand, if you were looking for just brand awareness, you might run a campaign where um, you see how many people just visit your channel's page. So it really differs. Like you have to see the right metrics and really analyze them in the right way. And then yeah, create more content on the stuff that works because you know data speaks louder than words. That's true. And you did mention what we think may work might not work. And you shared a story with somebody that thought sparkles may work in their branding. <laughs> Maybe you could share that with our, our audience also, because we think we know best when all reality, we need an outside view to help us maybe see clear, or I always need someone to help me simplify things because I tend to complicate them with my content. And then, then somebody to run the test and say, Hey, what you thought worked, even though you simplified it, it still isn't working. So we need to try something different. So share, share that with us if you can. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I go through that as well. You know, sometimes I think this is going to work and then my data tells me something that's the exact opposite. And what I always say is data over ego. That's it. That's about it. Mm -hmm. So there was a brand um, that I was working with previously. They had bath care and body care products. And, you know, the founder, her entire vibe and the brand's vibe was absolutely like sparkly and just like a lot of very extreme luxury vibes. So the moment you get that bottle out of the package, you open it, you just feel like, you know, like a royalty of somewhere. Yeah. So um, when we started doing her campaigns, we thought uh, we send out gift packages to influencers that were two different sorts. And what we realized was that the type of audience that was coming at, back and buying it really differed based on the type of packages that were being sent to these influencers. So the ones that mm -hmm. got more minimalist packaging was a little older audience whereas the people who got more sparkly packaging and more you know pink glitter thrown on the boxes type of packaging was the younger audience so it differed on a, on some different demographics as well and what their core aesthetics were like whether they were cottage core versus dark academia but um that's the thing we really thought that the glitter one would work better what we were surprised by was that we got way more sales out of the minimalist packaging because it hit a larger amount of audience who just looked at it and said this is what i consider a luxury rather than the glitter so um she didn't like leaving the glitter behind but <laughs> again it's all very good right hey i like that um that you got to get the ego out of the way and sometimes it helps to work with someone like you that can come in with that outside view 
share with my audience what it's like working with you. So what exactly are you doing for me? Because, you know, whether it's you or another company that does this, you know, what should we expect as a, a brand? Like, hey, do we need to make videos? Do we need to give you the copy? How much effort are we putting in versus what you're putting in? And then what exactly are you coming back with us? If you could give us a summary on that, I think that would be helpful to know, like, what are those steps? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the one thing that I always tell all my brands and potential clients is we will work with you like a co-founding team, because I realize that, you know, entrepreneurship is a very lonely journey and it's very frustrating. And sometimes you have 10 different ideas, but you don't know which ones to prioritize or you get frustrated because 30 different things have come up from Sunday till Monday. And you you know, you open the laptop on Monday and you want to cry because it's so bad and you have so many fires to put out. So I understand that. And the thing that really sets us apart is we will treat you like we're your co-founding team. We will be there from step one to step Z. Um, until you want us around and really support you in every way possible, which is why we don't call ourselves a marketing agency. We call ourselves an acceleration agency mm -hmm. because we will use the power of creative and data to come up with different strategies, prioritize what needs to be done. So that can just be taken off your plate. So for example, if you are a SaaS tech founder who has a lot of ideas on how to get you know users onboarded onto your new app, but you really don't know how to start with that yet. You don't know where to go first or what would work better. The best part is we have people from all over the world who have lots of experiences in lots of different niches. And these people will help you prioritize exactly what should be done. And then sure. um, we will be guiding the strategy. We will be doing the implementation. We will be sitting with you every week for a huge call where we discuss this is what we think should be done. Now, what do you think we should go forward with? So, you know, awesome. you can really accelerate in a proper manner, um, get the expertise of an entire team at the cost of a single hire. Awesome. And do you guys um, basically tell us what creatives to make, like give us guidance on that, or do you help create the creatives? You know, I already have a, a small marketing team. I'm sure you work with them and say, hey, we need these videos done or these pictures of the founder. You know, walk me through just some quick steps on that. Right. So it really depends on exactly what you need at your stage. So if you have a marketing team and you just want us to work on the strategy side or, you know, implementing and optimizing ads rather than creating the creatives, then we will work that way. If you need us to create the creatives because you have a team of five and there's one graphic designer and you don't have capacity to do all of this stuff, then we will create them as well. I mean, by the end of the day, as I said, it's really about what you need to accelerate and really reach yeah. that stage you've been dreaming about. And we just, you know, pitch in and help. Yeah. I mean, like for me, thinking of me, I make the videos and the pictures, but I just need someone saying, I need this type of picture so then we can add this to it. Or, yeah. you know, I need this type of video because this is what's working. So that outside view is would definitely be helpful. Um, you said you come up with a good like case study or review for me. Um, I know we mentioned the sparkles. Sparkles don't always <laughs> um, share yeah. a good story with us with somebody else. Maybe you've helped. Yeah, sure. So um, I worked with Miss Intercontinental for their last pageant. And what we ended up doing, we realized was that that's actually really a great example. That's why I chose this of why um, creatives are so important. And, you know, your target audience is in robots. So you can't just keep going with I have a great logo. I have a great name. I'm, I, I can just do whatever I want now. What we realized was that their audience was not just women and men who were interested in seeing pageants. We wanted a broader audience to come and view it and you know be inspired by it we especially wanted to inspire younger women not just to you know walk the ramp but to be better to do better to actually do good for the world right so what we started doing a great experiment that we ran with them was we chose the top models that were contending for the finals um we matched up each country's queen with a woman who was doing very well in a you know stem related field from her country and then we had them go live on instagram for a little while where people could ask them questions they both could talk to each other and they could talk about how they want to help their you know local economy or country or help with healthcare or whatever it is that's more important in their country and what that did was that didn't just capture the attention of more women who could be inspired it also captured the attention of the local community who really rallied around these women and these queens and voted for them when the finals actually came around 
so it you know solved two problems with just one experiment that we did out there that is awesome i love hearing about that that's like real world experience and were they comfortable actually getting on camera and doing that or did you have to like give them a script or tell them what to say <laughs> No, no, it wasn't scripted at all. So we gave the queens um, complete freedom to contact anybody that they wanted to from their own country. And if they couldn't find one, then our team went to search, looking through, you know, who would be comfortable coming on there. Um, the best part, honestly, was that we didn't have to prepare the models to do anything. We didn't have to give them any scripts. They were amazing, powerful young women who were just very natural on camera. And it wasn't, um, how do I put it? It wasn't fake in a way, you know, they weren't just saying that they wanted to do good. Like these are people who are each of those women who were competing on the international scale were chosen from their countries up out of hundreds of thousands of applicants. So these are people who actually wanted to help. Right. They actually had that motivation and that passion inside of them. So it was I mean, that's the easiest that we've ever worked with anyone. <laughs> That's all. I'm sure I guess I did, didn't think of that because they have that training. They're trained to get on stage and share their story. I'm just thinking of a lot of brands and business owners that are scared to be on camera. So, but I'm sure you, you guys could either give them advice or figure out pictures or text. Like there's so many different ways that you can get those creatives where it doesn't have to be video. But I, what do you think? Do you think video is always best if you can share your personality? Um, I would say the way that today's algorithms work on different social platforms, video is definitely better because, you know, organically it gets pushed more. People are more likely to watch it. If you look at the data right now, way more people will make purchase decisions after watching a video versus looking at a carousel or an image. And secondly, yes, absolutely. I think with some business owners or influencers, it might take a while to get them comfy in front of the camera. Yeah. But then... Um, once you if if you are like talented enough to actually make them feel comfortable and their actual personality comes out the weirder it is the better honestly because there is yeah. some subset of audience out there that's exactly like you can relate to you and wants to see more of that weirdness oh and by the way i always recommend this actually helped me is if you're nervous getting on camera start off with podcast whether you're <laughs> A guest on a podcast that can kind of help you because it's just somebody asking you questions and you answer them right that can start getting you comfortable being on camera or start a podcast where you're just asking questions of other people that will also help you get comfortable on camera from there once you do some recordings like this it's a lot easier to actually start making coaching videos or any type of videos so well yeah all right. So everybody watching, if you have a brand, a business, or want to start one, don't use robots. Those aren't your customers. And I think, you know, anyone that would be needs help with this, you know, people need to split test things, you know, definitely reach out and your website, we're going to direct people. We'll put the links down below um, to your website and LinkedIn, right? Those would probably be the best two places. Okay. What, what should I do? Just fill out the contact form on your site and say, help, help I need help. Um, do you do a scheduled call <laughs> yeah. and start learning about them? What's that process like if I wanted to work with you? Uh, yeah, you can fill out a contact form or you can just go ahead and book a meeting uh, with me, a 30 minute exploration call where we'll go through, you know, what you need, where your business is at. We'll tell you a little bit more about how we can help before we come up with a strategy. Or you can just message me on LinkedIn. Like, honestly, I'm there 24 seven. That's awesome. And she has been great having you. Thanks for being on. Thanks for sharing your, your story and helping the audience just stop using AI. It has to be real. And if you can't do it on your own, reach out to Anchita and have her company help you. Like get, get started on the right path, right? I will take things off your plate like this. Easy. I love it. Well, thanks again for uh, jumping on and thanks everyone for watching and listening. And just a reminder, we're on YouTube and podcast. So whichever you prefer, go check us out on YouTube. That way you can see our, our funny faces while we're making these videos. So our smiling faces. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> and I will we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for having me.